Olaf Scholz has wasted no time since being sworn in as Germany's new chancellor. His first diplomatic trip in the role took him to Paris, as has been the norm for decades. Then he went on to Brussels for talks with European Union and NATO leaders. Some of the main topics being discussed include tensions with Russia over Ukraine and the pressures of the migrant crisis on the bloc's borders. The EU economy and the fast spread of the Omicron variant were also high on the list of priorities. Next on the agenda is likely to be a visit to Poland. Well, for more on this story, I'm joined by our correspondent Shona Murray, who's in Brussels. Hi, Shona. This is Scholz's EU debut as Chancellor. How has he been received? Well, it certainly is his debut as Chancellor, of course, but he was Vice Chancellor. He was Federal Finance Minister. He's very well known here in Brussels. Um, he's very pro European. He obviously knows very much the establishment in the EU, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, knowing her from government in, in Germany. So, uh, you know, it was an important day for him, I suppose. And he did speak in English at that press conference. He laid out uh, some of his priorities for the next few years, including what he called was a sovereign, a more sovereign European Union when it comes to foreign policy, which could be something of a hostage to fortune, Rue, because as we know, getting any uh, united foreign policy in the European Union is an incredibly difficult thing to do. His predecessor, Angela Merkel, was seen as a leader among the EU27, but she did oversee the controversial Nord Stream uh, 2 gas pipeline from Russia. Um, how is the EU expected to handle relations over this? Well, I think there is an expectation that he will continue on being the leader of the 27 EU member states, given Germany's outsized economy and therefore huge influence. And of course, given the fact that he is already an establishment figure, and I think he'll, he'll expect to take that lead, uh, knowing, of course, that he uh, his first meeting with, uh, today was with Emmanuel Macron, the president of France. In relation to Nord Stream, he's going to come under quite a bit of pressure. He already has come under pressure from the Polish Prime Minister, Mateusz Morawiecki, who has urged him not to continue with Nord Stream 2 because of the leverage that it gives to people like Vladimir Putin in relation to uh, um, the, in, in relation to energy for the whole of the European Union. He's been urged to end that project. Um, he said today in a press conference when he was asked about it that, of course, uh, having a foreign government, particularly one as confrontational as Russia, have, wielding so much influence over energy in the European Union is not something that is good, of course, for the future of Europe. And he started his uh, first trip with his first trip to France as Chancellor. His new administration is hoping to forge even closer ties with Paris. What might this look like across the European border? Well, it's stage? an interesting one because uh, we know that. Well, we, we know that obviously they, they met today, President Macron. France has the six months presidency of the European Union starting in January. It has its priorities. Uh, the two sides will try to, you know continue a strong relationship but of course they have their differences in particular as we know Olaf Scholz is going into government with the Greens and um, we've we know that there's a difference of opinion when it comes to France and Germany and some countries in relation to the role that nuclear energy can play in terms of the uh, providing energy for Europe and there's also differences of opinion in relation to uh, the budgetary system uh, given that all EU member states are suffering under a pandemic but I think overall particularly given the uh, threats that Europe is facing at the moment in relation to Russia, Ukraine, uh, the various border issues and so, and so on, I think the two sides will try to continue on a very steady path.